media production and certifying them as youth producers as a meaningful work experience to instruct youth on how to share their stories and voice through media production. Be hands on with the switcher, got to learn a lot about the camera, the green screens. If this interests you and you're, you want to do it, you should be an intern. Um, at first, I didn't think I was interested in this, but doing this made me interested in it. MNN's El Barrio Firehouse Youth Media Center provides free trainings for the youth. All of our programs are hands-on and teach youth about the production process, how to use professional equipment, and even how to produce and edit shows. To learn more about becoming a certified producer in both field and studio production, check us out on social media or drop by and pick up some flyers. Hello, my name is Jose Ponce. I am a community journalist at the Youth Channel. We are broadcasting from MM El Barrio Firehouse Community Media Center, and today we have a special show called Urban Voices from Brazil. We'll be interviewing community journalists from Brazil to find out more about the issues affecting their communities and talk about the role of massive and community media in prom promoting change. Please welcome Diana Beatriz de los Santos and Michael De Silva to New York, to El Barrio and the Firehouse. Diana Beatriz de los Santos, Michael De, Michael de Silva, could you tell us a little bit about yourselves and how you guys become com community journalists? Tell us a little bit about you and how you became a journalist in the community. So, I have 22 years old, I'm a student of communication, I study journalism, and Acabei virando jornalista comunitária por querer mostrar um pouco da realidade da minha comunidade. Então, isso me impulsionou a ser jornalista comunitária. É, eu tenho 20 anos, eu, eu moro agora na Jornal da Rotinha, no Rio de Janeiro. É, eu sou coordenador de um jornal comunitário. Eu impulsionou a ser jornalista, fui e torno como os jornais tradicionais relatados a todos e eu não gostava. Hey, Diane is 22 years old, and I become a, a, a journalist just because I watch everything was going on in my community, all the issues that I was facing, and that made me interest. Michelle, I'm 20 years old. I'm from Favela da Rocinha, Rio de Janeiro, and I'm a coordinate, coordinator of a newspaper for my community, and very incommodated by the education where I live, I got involved in the community journalism. That's the same reason I become a journalist. There's a lot of issues happening in my community that the, mis the massive media is not covering. Um, I think that's something that all community journalists probably have in common. Uh, moving on, could you tell us a little bit about some of the issues that are currently being faced by your communities or the communities that you report on? É, no geral, são problemas ligados às questões sociais e econômicas. São, esses são os maiores problemas. Mas fora isso, tem problemas relacionados à violência. E, enfim, eu acho que esses são os mais fortes. Agora, uh, right the, the issue that I see in my neighborhood, in my community, is the social and economical problems that I'm facing very much right now. Uh, of course, we have crimes and all, but those are other issues that we don't talk about as much. What about you, Jose? Uh, in the first place, we have to start with esgoto, ruas de esgoradas, and we have to start with In my case, I'm talking about all the problems that I see in the community as the streets with lots of holes, no proper water, and education. That's what I'm looking forward to, to represent. Yeah, education, well, yeah. Education is a big issue as well here in New York City. Um, so you were talking about the education. You can tell me about the issues that the education has been, that the issues are, the issues related with education in Brazil. Os problemas de educação. Bom, a educação nas escolas, na rotina, por exemplo, 
existem muitos moradores adiante e e adolescentes que é, não tem escola na localidade, não tem professores e tal, tal tem infraestrutura e a questão de inauguração de escola em anos de eleição. In my place, the favela da Rocinha, we don't have enough schools to support the number of students in, in class. We're missing chairs, we make materials, professionals as teachers with a very good salary. So the, we have a poor uh, education in favela da Rocinha. Um, there's any issues where, um, where you're from? Where you specifically from from Brazil? É, o problema da educação é, é bem presente, não só na Rocinha, mas em todo o Rio de Janeiro. Mas tem outros problemas também, como o problema da, da violência. A, a polícia não é muito presente, ela não está ali só para proteger como deveria ser. Então, tem uma acaba tendo uma rivalidade muito grande entre a comunidade e a polícia. E... Eu acho que esse problema de violência também é bem grande. And my uh, education is a problem everywhere in Brazil, not just favela da Rocinha. And what other than that, we see a lot of problems of, uh, between the policemen and the community, where the police is not really doing their job. So the violence between the police, the crime, the crime, and the community, it's very big. Does, do, do you think that the Brazil community can trust in the police? Do you in the police Brazilian? No. No. That's no trust no. coming from the community related to the police whatsoever. How can you trust the police that, that kills and torture, torture uh, 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 a person from the community? Well, the reason what I'm asking you this is because we are right here in New York, we are facing the same situation. The police, um, no so long ago, uh, murdered two people, uh, Eric Gardner and a woman in Brooklyn. Eric Gardner, a Staten Island resident, and a woman in Brooklyn. Um, and so that's why my question is because right here, actually, we don't really, in New York City, we don't really have that much trust with the police. So it's something kind of funny to see how two different countries, two different states, Rio de Janeiro and New York City, so far and far away, have the same issue of not trusting the police. Um, you guys are considering yourself, well, you guys, not considering yourself, you guys are community journalists. Do you feel protected by the police? Do you think the police will, pro that should protect you? Você acha que a polícia vai te proteger, te protege nos dias de hoje? É, eles nem, ela não me protege, eu não me seguro que eu me protejo pela polícia de deitar do Rio de Janeiro. In unhappiness, they don't protect me, they have never protect me, neither me or my, my community, and ne, nobody it's trust on the police in Rio de Janeiro. Uh, do you think this has to, has to do some, well, this clearly has to do something with the, uh, with politics. Do you think politics are thinking on doing something to protect the people in the favelas? Um, um, algum interesse, entendeu? Que não é proteger a comunidade. Pode ser qualquer outro, mas não é bem esse. <laughs> yes, I do believe that they have like a, a relation between the politician and the police to be working together, but the only thing, we don't know if they dare to do what they're supposed to do, protect the community. They are there for any other reason, for to get money, to take people out, 
but not really to for a politician itself to make their name to say I'm doing my job putting them there but in reality inside the community that's not exactly what is happening you show us a video of the police brutality that the police pick up a woman who was unfortunately dead and they strap her on the back of the car and drove her all the way for quite some time and you guys record um, someone recording their phones those police officers are they are going they are getting a suspension and they are being punished or they are receiving anything of punishment like not being any more a cop or anything like it <laughs> E o que você acha que o que o que, aconte, o que aconteceu com eles? Eles foram presos? Eles perderam? Eles foram eles foram administrativamente, perderam os direitos da arma, mas continuam trabalhando dentro da corporação. Yeah, they did they did lose their badges and guns, but they still working inside the corporation. So they doing probably office kind of paperwork but it's still inside the police. Not outside anymore, but it's inside of the corporation itself. Um, uh, for what I remember, I believe you work on a newspaper, and we saw a newspaper where a man just disappeared. That person just disappeared on the hands of the police. Um, the community or the police are being doing something to stop this people are being picked up by the police and disappear on the hands of the police? Are the government is doing something? A unidade apoiou a reportagem do jornal. A polícia, eu ali também não gostou. E, infelizmente, até hoje a unidade ela pode algum resultado em relação à questão do Anarillo, a do corpo dele, quando é o enterro dele. Na estatunidade dele, até hoje da família. E tudo é, é uma muito atual ainda, essa comunidade. The community helped a lot when they saw the news, what I published myself, and tried to get justice as much as we could. We asked for answers, where the body is located, what happened, why, uh, what's going to happen with those cops and we're still working on it. It's a case that didn't end and is still going on nowadays. Media production and certifying them as youth producers as a meaningful work experience to instruct youth on how to share their stories and voice through media production. Well, I think I liked it. I really liked it because it gave me the opportunity to learn something new that I, I didn't even t talk, think about it because I never thought about being a producer, being a director or something else. But right now, I have the training um, and I have what it takes to be a director. MNN's El Barrio Firehouse Youth Media Center provides free trainings for the youth. All of our programs are hands-on and teach youth about the production process, how to use professional equipment, and even how to produce and edit shows. To learn more about becoming a certified producer in both field and studio production, check us out on social media or drop by and pick up some flyers. Uh, moving on. What kind of relationship does the massive media have with the community in Brazil? Qual é a relação entre a comunidade comunidade marginalizada e a mídia brasileira? É, a, o que ocorre é que nem sempre a grande mídia mostra a realidade da, das comunidades no geral. Então, sempre a comunidade é sempre muito vista pelo lado negativo pela mídia. É o lugar onde tem é, marginais, onde tem gente pobre, e onde tem negros, então é sempre vista com uma imagem negativa. Isso é que não é todo o a mídia mostra exatamente o que é and that they show just what it's visible and interest for them to show. So they show the 
the poor part, the black people doing something wrong, that we are the chiefs of the city, but mm -hmm. they're not really showing what's going on in the community itself what the problems that we have having with no security, no social justice, and no education. <laughs> Still, it's more even funny and relevant is that we have the same issue here. Mm -hmm. uh, massive media just cover an event. They just go and cover an event, but don't seem to show what's really happening or what is the, what is the truth mm -hmm. compared to community journalists. What about community journalists in Brazil? How they deal up the issue or the event that is happening? É, a mídia sempre tenta, ela, na verdade ela é forçada a mostrar determinadas coisas, mas nem sempre ela mostra com o olhar que deveria ser mostrado. Então o jornalismo comunitário tem o papel de mostrar a realidade a realidade mesmo, as coisas como elas são, o, o olhar do morador, o olhar de quem está vivendo dia a dia para as pessoas. Então esse é o papel do jornalismo comunitário. Not all the time the the, the news shows exactly what it is like as I, I told before, and that's the that's the part that community journalists are trying to do to show the truth, what's really going on inside the community all the problems, all the, the crimes, the policemen issues. What, what type of, well, what are your relationship with your community in Brazil? Uh, na verdade, a, a comunidade nem, ela tem, é, acaba também não gostando muito da mídia porque por, por, por essa situação de sempre a mídia tá mostrando o que não é a realidade. Então, a comunidade não confia muito na mídia, sabe? Eles sempre estão com o pé atrás em relação ao que a mídia mostra. The, the community doesn't really like the media as much because they know they're not going to show the truth, what the really truth is inside there. So that's why the community journalist now came and it's getting bigger and bigger in Brazil right now because we really want to show and help people to improve, to grow, and places that we have problems to be solved. What role do you play in creating change for the better? Okay. Então, eu sempre procuro mostrar os problemas, mostrar a realidade e ao mesmo tempo a gente tentar correr atrás da solução para esses problemas. Se é um problema social, a gente vai mostrar e ao mesmo tempo a gente vai procurar a a instituição que responsável por aquilo ali para tentar uma resposta e tentar uma solução para aquele problema. What we try to do is just to show exactly what it's going on in the community. If it's a social problem, you're going to look for a corporation that can help us to get the answers for and help us to save the problem. In that case, if it's economical problem, we try to get funds and help and when it's need. So as much as we can, we will progress and look for help and try to solve all the problems that we face nowadays, all the issues. Um. The couple just recently end. One of the things that the World Cup bring to Brazil probably was um, economically. It was helpful for the economic of Brazil. But at what cost? Because that was the only time that we have seen the, Bra uh, the Brazil police going into favelas, going into and protect the community. Why is that they only doing it when these, these big this big events. A polícia já está na favela antes da Copa, né? Ela já entrou antes. Ah. Mas na verdade a gente sabe que isso foi já pensando no, nos grandes eventos, na Copa e nas Olimpíadas, que colocaram a polícia 
na, nas favelas. Mas, assim, é, é um projeto que não está funcionando como deveria. Ainda não está no ponto que deveria chegar, de a polícia chegar na favela, mas chegar para proteger a comunidade, porque eu acho que esse é o papel da polícia também. Então, é, os grandes... Eles colocaram a polícia na favela por conta dos grandes eventos, sim. Mas e depois? Vai acabar tudo isso e como é que fica a comunidade? Ela vai continuar sendo protegida? Então essa é a pergunta que a comunidade faz todos os dias, entendeu? A um, polícia estava in the favela way before the World Cup started. Just trying to do a clean up as they called. But the problem is the project that they blamed that the police would be there to protect the community, it's not really working because they not there for their reason. They just there to show the people whatever you want to see that we are cleaning Brazil for the World Cup. And that's the question that everybody has in Brazil is saying after the World Cup, what really is going to do? Are we going to have a protection? or it's just a show time. Media production and certifying them as youth producers as a meaningful work experience to instruct youth on how to share their stories and voice through media production. I wanted to do a lot of projects, but I never know how to work a camera. Like this program taught, taught me a lot about cameras and a lot about people and getting to know people. It was fun. MNN's El Barrio Firehouse Youth Media Center provides free trainings for the youth. All of our programs are hands-on and teach youth about the production process, how to use professional equipment, and even how to produce and edit shows. To learn more about becoming a certified producer in both field and studio production, check us out on social media or drop by and pick up some flyers. Anything else you would like to add about your work before we close the show? Tem mais alguma coisa que você gostaria de falar sobre o seu trabalho antes que acabe? Eu queria dizer que esse trabalho é importante não só para mim, mas para toda a minha comunidade. E eu faço esse trabalho mesmo por amor à minha comunidade, por tentar. É, eu acho que é uma forma de tentar mudar a realidade, mesmo que seja o mínimo já já está ajudando em alguma coisa. Então, é um trabalho que eu quero continuar fazendo e tenho muito orgulho de, de fazer, de ser uma jornalista comunitária e de poder ajudar a minha comunidade. I'm very I'm very proud of what I do. I really do with all the love and I think it's very important for me and my community to do as little as we can to see the change of this reality. And with my love or a love for my community, I will do it and I will keep doing my best to see they grow. Um, we are broadcasting from the youth channel, uh, specifically in trying to engage in youth as well in New York City or Rio de Janeiro or New York and um, Brazil. Se você tem alguma mensagem que você queira dar, deixar para a comunidade de Nova York, uhum. de Rio de Janeiro, Brasil? Ah, é, na verdade, eu queria dizer que, independente de qualquer coisa, a gente sempre tem que lutar pelos nossos direitos, sempre tem que correr atrás é, daquilo que a gente que nos pertence mesmo. E problemas, é preconceito, tudo isso acontece, principalmente com a população pobre. Mas a gente não pode simplesmente aceitar isso. A gente tem que lutar e tem que correr atrás para que isso seja mudado. I would like to say que we we really have to fight for our rights. Doesn't matter how hard it will be and how long it will take, we have to make sure if you want to take care of what is our, belong to us, it's our country, our beach, our city, our community, we need to get together and fight for, to get back. Um, thank you so much, Michael, uh, Diana. It was great to hear 
some of the issues that young people in Brazil are facing and the role that media has played promoting inherent, inherent the change. Hopefully we can take a couple of lessons from today and apply them to our own work at the youth channel. Uh, before we leave, I want to give a big shout out and thank you thank you to Brotherhood Sister So, community-based organizers working with youth in Harlem. Bro Brotherhood Sister is hosting our, our working with both Michelle and Diana, and they are set up today at the youth channel interview with Urban Bosses from Brazil. Uh, thank you both of you for coming. It w it's a great honor for, m for me and uh, for the youth channel to meet uh, as well as young journalists from Brazil. And it's kind of sad to see the same issues happening in here as well as in Brazil. And probably these issues are not being only in Brazil or New York, but unfortunately probably is happening around the world and probably around in Latin America. Uh, but Thank you so much for coming and being here with us. Thank you. Thank you. This is Javier Jose Ponce at the YouTube channel ch presenting today's show Urban Voices. I hope you enjoy the show and stay tuned to see what is coming up next on Eminem. Media production and certifying them as youth producers as a meaningful work experience to instruct youth on how to share their stories and voice through media production. Well, help me in um, like different points of view of like movies and stuff like that, how hard it is to like try and make a movie and you need to like do a lot of like prep work and studying on your work before you start like making a movie. MNN's El Barrio Firehouse Youth Media Center provides free trainings for the youth. All of our programs are hands-on and teach youth about the production process, how to use professional equipment, and even how to produce and edit shows. To learn more about becoming a certified producer in both field and studio production, check us out on social media or drop by and pick up some flyers. You're watching the Youth Channel. Be sure to stay updated on our social media pages. To find out more about the Youth Channel, check out our YouTube page where we upload all of your favorite and investing segments. For the most part in definitely a lot of healing and definitely a lot of creep. And don't forget to follow us on Twitter, add us on Facebook for more updates and news, and see behind the scenes footage of our productions on the Youth Channel's Instagram page.